There's supposed to be a separation between government and religion. The Supreme Court of Canada says so. But judging by activities taking place at Toronto City Hall, it appears one particular religion has been given an exemption to this edict. Can you possibly guess which faith that would be? In 2015, the Supreme Court of Canada ruled that the City Council in Saguenay, Quebec, could no longer open its meetings with a prayer. In a unanimous decision, the court said reciting a Catholic prayer at council meetings actually infringes on freedom of conscience and religion. The ruling was in response to an eight-year-long legal battle. It began with a complaint against the town filed by Alain Simoneau, who is an atheist along with a secular rights organization. The Supreme Court eventually ordered the city of Saguenay to end the prayers, and it also ordered the city and the mayor to pay Simino more than $30,000 in damages and costs. At the end of the day, the court stated that religious neutrality, quote, requires that the state neither favor nor hinder any particular belief, end quote. But apparently what's good for the Catholic goose doesn't apply to the Islamic gander. That's because recently in Toronto, according to a fascinating story in the Quiggin Report, Toronto City Hall recently hosted a religious ceremony celebrating the breaking of the Ramadan fast. Here, check it out. Dig that groovy beat. But by allowing this ceremony to take place, Toronto City Hall appears to be violating the Supreme Court ruling in terms of merging church and state, or mosque and state, as the case may be. The holding of these prayers was the brainchild of Nathan Shan, the councillor for Ward 42 and former Ontario NDP candidate. And it was done in conjunction with Toronto Mayor John Tory. But this story gets even more intriguing. You may recall in 2015, the Voices of the Nation's Christian Gospel Choir was refused a permit to sing their hymns at Toronto's Young Dundas Square, something they had been doing for a decade. Why were they refused? Well, they were told by the events manager, Natalie Bellman, that singing Christian hymns amounted to proselytization. Here's what she said, quote, It doesn't matter if it's speaking or singing. Either way, if you're praising Jesus or praise the Lord, that's proselytizing, end quote. And keep in mind, this choir wasn't performing at City Hall, but at a public square. But that was then, and this is now, for on May 29th, an imam was invited into Toronto City Hall chambers and issued a call to prayer. And for those who don't speak Arabic, they might be surprised by the English translation of that Islamic call to prayer. Quote, Allah is greatest. I bear witness that there is no God but Allah. I bear witness that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. Hurry to the prayer. Hurry to success. Hurry to salvation. Allah is the greatest. There is no God but Allah. End quote. Hmm, no proselytization there, eh? Indeed, a Christian group singing gospel music in a town square is verboten, but an imam making an Islamic call to prayer right in the chambers of Toronto City Hall and apparently in direct violation of a Supreme Court edict, that's somehow okay? <laughs> what the hell? But wait, there's more. What was also brought into City Hall chambers that day was a poster displaying the logo of Islamic Relief Canada, whose parent organization, Islamic Relief International, was outed as being a front for Islamic terrorist groups in 2014. <laughs> Lovely. Then again, championing Islam appears to be job one at Toronto City Hall these days. In fact, if the name Nathan Shan rings a bell, that might be because Ezra Levant exposed this councillor last November for proposing a motion that supported a Muslim-only youth fellowship program in councillors' offices. And the motion passed, of course, meaning that this politically correct version of apartheid, i.e. the idea that only Muslims are being hired to support city staff, is okay. And get this, 
they're not even chosen by the city, but rather are being selected by Muslim imams who are committed to getting infidels to convert to Islam. Uh, yeah, folks, your taxpayer dollars hard at work yet again. And where are the internship programs for Christians, Jews, Hindus, Sikhs, Buddhists, and anyone else? Oh, well, those programs don't exist. Oh, well, so much for that diversity thing, eh? As well, you may recall how last November, City Hall was also the venue for a Muslim propaganda, oh, sorry, I mean a Muslim information session to drum up sympathy for the Rohingya refugees in Myanmar. But just look what happened to Rick Heinzman from San Francisco, someone who supports the Buddhists of Myanmar, who continue to deal with Islamic terrorism. You're probably a Holocaust denier also. Yeah, you're denying this genocide because you're also a Holocaust denier, and you have to leave. You should get out. You no, know you should leave, and you should leave too. No, I am going. Get out. You should be removed from here. No, you're deniers. Thank you. You're denying history. You should be removed. Are you not? You should be removed from here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, he was frog march right out of the chamber, and if you have an opinion that goes against the narrative of the religion of peace, well, you are obviously an Islamophobe. So, what is the city's response to what appears to be a glaring double standard? Councillor Shan did not respond to interview requests. Meanwhile, Don Pete, the spokesman for Mayor Tory, said that, quote, not-for-profit slash charitable faith-based groups are entitled to permit facilities for use at City Hall provided the use is inclusive of all and in compliance with anti-harassment slash discrimination legislation and city policy, end quote. Maybe that complies with City of Toronto policy, but it sure doesn't seem to comply with the Supreme Court edict, at least not to me. And really, what is inclusive about policies and sermons that are all about promoting Islamic exceptionalism, assuming that's not an oxymoron, of course. And finally, why won't anyone at City Hall answer the question as to why the logo of an organization that's being linked to terrorism was displayed in the chamber? In summary, the ongoing capitulation to Islam in Toronto is both disturbing and shameful, something that seems aided and abetted and accelerated by Islamic fifth columnists and their liberal allies who are presumably consumed with white guilt. Toronto City Hall seems to be dismissive of Canadian law, yet increasingly beholden to Sharia law, Gee, what next? Perhaps a motion to change Toronto's unofficial nickname of Hogtown? After all, that moniker doesn't sound very halal, and in Mayor Tory's Toronto, the ongoing mantra these days seems to be, if it's good, it's Islamic, and if it's Islamic, it's good. For the Rebel.media, I'm David the Menzoid Menzies. Hey folks, the Rebel has a brand new app. Please download that app and take the Rebel with you wherever you go.